tomorrow morning from 5 to 9 a.m. You know, financial pressures are just crushing America's young people to the extent that 20 and 30-somethings are now known as generation debt. Phil Keating reports. I feel like I'm in, like, this bubble that's just going to explode, you know? They're a generation in a cage. I maybe got trapped into something and I didn't quite know what I was getting myself into. It's a prison of too many bills. The fact that many of us have to borrow anyway in order to get through college means that living in the red becomes a way of life. Call them generation debt. 25-year-old Anya Kamenetz has written a book about her generation, the recent college graduates now struggling out in the workforce. The book's called Generation Debt. The average 25 to 34-year-old has over $4,000 in credit card debt. Why is it that it seems so hard for young Americans to stay in the black? The increasing importance and the increasing cost of a college education. That college education is far, far more expensive than it used to be. And so, with the average public university topping out at about $12,000 a year, and the average private university going up to $30,000 a year, more and more families are turning to student loans to pay for college. I mean, I knew it was gonna, it was gonna cost money for me to go to school. I never realized that the interest was gonna be so bad. Over the course of four years in college, Michelle Misiazic took out loans totaling $80,000. When she graduated, she went to work and live in New York City. Glamorous, but expensive. The typical vision of a young person today is that they want a high, a high class lifestyle. Without really planning, Michelle thought her monthly loan payments would be a manageable $300 a month. She was wrong. My student loan payments are $900 a month and I could not afford to live in New York paying back my student loans and my rent and everything else that I had to pay for. I just couldn't afford it, so I had to come home. Finances forced Michelle to give up the high life in New York and instead live with her family in Massachusetts. It's out of control. When you spend more than you actually make, there's just no way around it. Consumer credit counselors and finance experts say the average young American these days is spending about 11% more money every year than he or she actually makes. Now nationwide, the total household debt is now pegged at about $12 trillion. Of course, a lot of the blame can be traced right back to those incredibly easy to get credit cards, which of course make it incredibly easy to go into debt. And this sort of buy it now, pay later mentality is really a dangerous one for this generation. How dangerous can it get? Just take a look at John. He got into medical school and financed it with a student loan. You know, the way they sold it to you was that you just, you just take loans. Everybody does it. But after two years, John decided he was not cut out for med school, and he dropped out. No medical career, no real way to pay back what he says has ballooned to over $150,000 in debt. So he lives in a cheap ramshackle house furnished with stuff he finds for free. And I've mostly picked things up, um, you know, off the side of the road and scrounged things like that grate right there just came out of the trash. The bills, John ignores them, preferring to risk legal action against him. It when and if I ever make enough to pay him back, I'd love to pay him back. For generation debt, it is clear there's only one bottom line. Credit is simply a tool, and it can be used for good or for bad, but it shouldn't be something that you rely on to carry you over and above what you ought to be spending. What it really takes is financial discipline, but arguably, Americans are not encouraged to have that discipline. At large in New York City, I'm Phil Keaton. Phil, thanks. As you make those credit cards hot to the touch so people understand what's going on. Still ahead, people in energy-strapped California are being warned to conserve power as thousands of New Yorkers remain in the dark for the ninth day. Are the utility companies to blame? And dramatic video of a man being rescued after jumping under a train. That and this coming up on At Large. It's said to be the new fountain of youth that doesn't...